And we're back with some more Rimworld, and today it's going to be straight into recruitment. Cisco here has managed to get an inspired recruitment. This is our first inspired recruitment in about two and a half years, so we're going to abuse it. Uh, we are going to immediately prioritise Monkey over here. Now, Monkey is not actually the worst prisoner to recruit. They're, they're not the hardest. In fact, these two over here are far more difficult to recruit. The reason we're going to recruit Monkey is their cooking skill. They have eight cooking skill, which means they can instantly be uh, put into cooking and immediately start cooking for us. This was going to be our cook with their three cooking and we would have had to work them up and eventually make them good. But if we can just immediately get Monkey right here and now, plus this pawn over here, we should be able to recruit them shortly. They've only got 5.8 resistance left. So we're going to recruit Monkey, get them to join us immediately. We're going to name number 18 Sulu. Namely because we haven't got anyone from the original Star Trek and, you know, why not? I remember watching some of those movies when I was a kid, or at some point anyway. And, you know, I did enjoy them, so let's get a few of those characters in there. Ooh, anime tree linking is up. Uh, we've got up to 22 anima, sorry, not anime, anima tree linking is up. Which means we can now link Kira. But there was a great suggestion in the comments. Since we already have a level 6 link spell, where is it? Uh, this one? Berserk Pulse. We should, it's not high level to use, but gain the sidecast anyway. Yeah, we should get them to install the sidecast first, because it is possible. They'll get a random level 6 sidecast spell when they link with the tree. But if we give them Berserk Pulse first, they can't get it again, so they'll get some other level 6 spell. So, or sidecast, whatever you want to call it. It's a spell, basically. <laughs> Let's not mince words. So this way they should get a completely different spell. Well, Kira's on her way back to the tree, so we'll get her linked up. Once she gets to level 6, that's going to make things much simpler. Berserk Pulse is just incredible. Now all we have to do is get our hands on Invisibility and or the Skip. It's called Skip. Well, it's Teleport, basically, but, you know, it's called Skip. Ooh, Bionic Replacements are finished, but that's enough of the sidestepping. We now need to go towards Advanced Fabrication. We're going straight towards Starfight Basics. We've got a, we've, we can only recruit six more pawns, at which point we really want to be starting the engine about there if we want to get the highest score possible. Oh! I forgot to update the score, didn't I? And we're up to 28. Now, if you want to look for the rules for the score, they're down in the description, but the, the basic rules are hire 25 pawns, escape the planet. However many pawns survive, you gain one point, and for every season under 25, it takes you to get off the planet, you gain a point. So far, we're doing okay. For every season that passes, we usually manage to hire a pawn, even... Okay, we've lost a few along the way, but we're, we're, we're staying about even. New Silink for Kira. What did she get? What did she get? Where are you? Uh, she's got Berserk Pulse, and she didn't gain one. Oh. Well, that's interesting. So, when someone's about to gain a level, don't give them a sidecast first. Damn it, that was a waste. Ah! We could have got had two level six spells on her, now we only have one. Oh well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. I've learned something valuable. I think we'll keep... I think we'll keep going at this because we can get number 17 here and turn them into a decent one as well. Rolauren? She could probably become a decent uh, sidecaster in a bit. Uh, prison break again. Let's send in the alpaca police. I've made a defensive zone over there. Uh, they may not get there in time. No, we'll make the defensive zone there. Oh, never mind. We managed to catch up with them. Oh, no, 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 no shooting. Stop that. You know what? We're going to tell everyone to just ignore the uh, the violence just for the time being. There we go. No more accidental shooting. Yep, yep, yep. Stop that. And now our animals can take care of this problem. Wow, two of them are... Oh, what? Guys, guys, you're the police. Stop. Never mind. It worked. It's fine. Now we'll just uh, take our, our animals and, and put them back to work. <laughs> Muppets. It's coming into the summer months, time to start planting crops desperately again, so we're going to plant a whole bunch of heel root, we're going to need that, and also a lot of potatoes. We're going to hopefully be able to cram a whole bunch of meals out. Uh, what are we up to? 56 fine meals? We should have more than that. Now that we've got two cooks dedicated full-time to cooking, we should be able to crank out enough meals to actually go through all of our potatoes. Uh, where is our potatoes? Oh wow, we've actually gone through all our potatoes already. Yep, well, oh, so as predicted, it seems to be working. Say hello to number 19, O'Brien. Miles O'Brien, but everyone just called him by his second name. There's some people who just get called by their second name. O'Brien was one of them. Uh, yeah, transhumanist, nervous, nimble. I, there was a good recommendation to call them Geordie, but yeah, their stats were too good. I had to make them Irish. It was the only way. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm abusing I'm abusing my disposition, but whatever. I, I don't care. Uh, we'll get them all equipped up. How many pants do we have, actually? We have 28 pants. 
that's a lot of pants. Quest, a unique offer. They will give us a, for 31 pants, we had the offer of, well, no one cares about this one, the Stone Skin Glander and the Monosword, or the Architect Eye and the Luciferium. And the votes came in, and actually the Monosword and the Stone Skin Gland squeaked ahead by about one point. But there was one comment that actually made me sway the opposite direction when they advised me I should go for Lucy and the Eye with diamonds, which, yeah, I know, that's silly, but yeah, I kind of had to accept it. Also, we may not we may not end up doing this. The amount of money we're going to get for this many pants, it might be better off buying something else with them. We'll see. Actually, how long do we have to do that quest for? We have... Uh, ten. Expires in 21 days. We have 21 days to get that many pants. We will be fine. O'Brien is immediately helping out with the construction. We're trying to turn this entire place into marble, and then we'll do the floors up again. That way we should have a, a decent living area for everyone. Then we're going to rip out these and turn this into a much larger fridge. Oh, wait. Monty's having a heart attack. That's not fair. You know what? We're, we're actually going to try and tend to them with some herbal medicine. Maybe we can save the donkey. Oh, buggery. That donkey was bonded to Mo to Cisco. That That's not going to work well for them. How long does that last? 20 days. Ouch. Yeah, that's, that's going to suck. Oh, well. We'll just have to feed them some nice meals and make sure they get lots of recreation in. We finally have enough pants to get everyone sorted for this uh, quest. So I think... I think we're going to get everyone together. I use donkeys for her holding. They're just one of the more cost beneficial ones. And at the same time, we've got pretty much everyone unloading. We've cranked loading up to two, so they should be able to load up that caravan in fast, qu uh, in quick order and get everyone out of here. But at the same time, that did max out our storage capacity. I think we'll increase our storage capacity by building another storage area over here. Just because I don't want to run out of space anytime soon. One thing to do though, the moment the caravan leaves, don't forget to crank down load. Otherwise, your people are going to be a little bit less efficient than they would normally be. Ooh, we are flying through the research. That's advanced fabrication. Next up, Starflight Basics. Oh, our people have arrived and our tree is ready for linking. Okay, so Rule Lauren, I think you're going to be our next wizard, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you've got a scratch scar, fingers a bit damaged. You know what? That's all good. We'll just uh, throw you in there and begin the linking ritual right now. We'll let Kira keep meditating at it. Oh. Caravan, that was it. Now, we do have the option to fulfill the trade deal. The trade deal will net us the Lucy and all that, but you know what? I'm interested in something. How much are all these pants worth if we sell them? Because we've got some good crafters and we did make some of them out of some nice material. If we sell our cheapest 31 pants, we get 2,299. Thing is, do they have anything worth buying for that that's better than the Luciferium and the Architect Eye they're offering us? No, they don't. If they had a Doomsday, though, I would definitely consider buying that instead. A Doomsday rocket now would be something I would be very, very interested in. Instead, we'll fulfill the trade deal, get a bunch of junk, and now let's do a little bit of trading. There is a few things I would like to buy off them. Psychic Shock Lance, Psychic Soothe Pulsar, Psychic Insanity Lance. Yes, all three of those will be beautiful, thank you very much. Ooh, Gastro Analyzer. Well, we do have a second cook. Time to make them an even better cook. Oh, that's liver. Never mind. Damn it, I can't afford the Gastro Analyzer. I'll have to come back for it. I think the gastro analyzer, the bionic arm, and the bionic eye, I think we're going to want all of those. We're going to need to come back with about a little bit over three grand to get those. Oh, one second. Those armor skin glands, the two we extracted, they're worth eight fifty a piece. That's crazy. That's a lot of cash, and every single one of them comes with an armor skin gland. If we set up a hot box, if you're doing a long playthrough, set up a hot box, strip all the armor skin glands at them, and you make it eight fifty a pop. Damn. I mean, that's enough to aff afford the psychic shock lens it took to get the... Oh, never mind. Never mind. I'm getting distracted. Uh, yes, that means we can at least afford the gastroanalyzer to improve our cooker cook. Managed to sell some pants, and now we can afford to buy the bionic eye or the bionic arm. I think we'll go with the bionic arm. Worf deserves an upgrade. All right, we'll come back for that eye in a minute. That was a very, very successful trade run. Dear Lord, look at all that good stuff. All right, time for them to come back home. As a bit of a side project from a suggestion in the comments, we are going to tame a bunch of guinea pigs and we're going to breed them and see if we can get a lot of furs out of them. I have no idea how well that's going to work out. Ooh, I forgot to change the score. That needs to go up to 27 or is it? Yeah, 28. We need to put that at 28, that's fine. Yeah, we uh, went past a day, but we also at the same time, well, we went past the fifth, which means we've been here for 12 seasons, which means we lost a point. 
but we gained a point because we hired an extra pawn. All right, Sulu is down at the moment. We gave them a new uh, gastro analyzer, so they're good to go. Next up, we need to decide what we're going to do with some of the with the bionic arm and the arcotech eye. The arcotech eye, I. I hummed and hawed over who should get it, but I think the best thing to do is to give it to someone who has a damaged eye. If you look at the numbers here, we can see who's got the best accuracy, and we could give it to someone who has great accuracy, and that would be a waste. So Picard has amazing accuracy. Why bother making his accuracy any better when he's almost going to hit every shot anyway? We could give it to someone who has terrible accuracy, but that feels almost like a waste. However, Guinan here has a bit of a problem. She's got a burn scar on her left eye. That will cause her problems going forward. So, we'll just replace her eye. At least this fixes two problems. Oh, which eye is it? Always make sure you, you do the right eye, or the correct eye. Well, that takes care of that, and I think I kind of have to give Worf the uh, the artificial, or the bionic arm. Some people are missing pinkies and such, but a prosthetic arm only gives, it's about 75% effective as the real arm. So yeah, let's get them in operation. You know what? Will the first operation go through? I want to make sure there's uh, the hospital doesn't get jammed full of patients, and I just like having more than one pawn unconscious at a time. You better not mess that up. You better not mess that up. That's an architect guy. They're the most expensive ones. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, perfect. Nice architect guy. Ooh. Now let's see what that does to her numbers. Oh, wait, she's unconscious. Well, aiming accuracy is still 95%. Oh, I forgot something very, very important that I learned a long, long, long time ago. Research fire foam poppers. I was just looking at this and I thought, oh, I should stick a fire foam popper in there in case my backup package survival meals got burned. And then I realized I couldn't build them because I haven't researched it. Yeah, it's one of those key techs. Make sure you've got fire foam poppers in your storage area, unless you want everything incinerated. We have an exotic goods trader going by. Let's have a quick go see what they've got on offer. They do have several things I'm very interested in, namely the Doomsday Rocket Launcher. Those things can be clutch at keeping you alive, so that's definitely on the agenda. Love Enhancer to improve our second couple's happiness levels. And this circadian assistant, I'm quite interested in. That looks very nice. Yeah, we'll take a... Oh, side Trainer Neural Heat Dump. Yeah, we'll take one of those. That will allow Kira to dump all her heat into one of our pawns if she needs a reset. That could be clutch. All right, anything else? Oh, Psychic Insanity Lance. We've already got enough of those, I think. Yeah, we've got plenty on hand. Ouch, 4,500, that is a, that's going to take a big chunk out of our uh, bank account, but every single one of those were worth it. It has been a long time since we've gotten a raid. Was it the last 30 days? Yeah, you can see here that those raids were actually pretty decently spaced apart. We had a nice, decent gap here, but a raid has finally come and it's mechanoids again. Thankfully, none of our meditators were here. It was seven o'clock in the morning, so they're all still back at the base, though. So I'm going to make sure none of them come out just yet. Let's see what we got. Ugh. Yeah. That's that's going to be so much fun. Not a single power core in here. Though we do have some interesting goodies. They've got a mech drop beacon, which means a bunch of mechs are going to drop in when this starts off. They've also got a mech capsule that's got, means there's two, three? Yeah, there's three surprise mechs in there. Uh, also on the ground, we've got three pikemen. We've got one lancer, thankfully. Uh, two scythers, and of course a centipede. But uh, they've also got a mech assembler and a few things. There's walls over here that will protect us mostly, but yeah, there, there is some gaps in those walls. Which means we can't even leave the edge of our base. we got to take care of this straight away. I'm thinking grab a sniper, put them in some smoke and get them to trigger one of these turrets. That will cause all of these to charge. Once they charge, we'll lure them into our kill box and then we'll murder them with grenades and the usual malarkey. Alright, let's get this started. Before we get to deal with the mechanoids though, we got a little bit of a too deep infestation we're going to have to take care of. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of free meat every so often. Oh, I should probably make sure the dogs get into a safe position. I don't want any of my uh, haulers getting in the way. Yeah, we'll put you all back in the loading area. Those Labradors have been, been quite valuable. Uh, let's see what we got. It should only be... like The thing about two deep infestation is they're usually pretty, pretty minor in comparison to everything else. There we go. That's two Mega Spiders, six Cillipedes, and a few Mega Scarabs. And that will go very badly for them. Though we will lose a few of our alpacas, but that was bound to happen. Alright, we'll clean up this mess and we'll get around to dealing with the mechanoids. I have a very special plan in store for them. Oh, ah, oh, damn it. They've decided to have a marriage ceremony in a former prison cell because it's got a table in it. Well, that's just wonderful. I suppose everyone will be in nice, close proximity to each other and hopefully no one will start a fight because, you know, it's a really small room. <laughs> that's some good socializing going on there. Cisco and Guinan are beginning their marriage ceremony. That is wonderful. Can anyone else actually attend? 
You know what? Who cares? Muppets. <laughs> They're almost as bad as duplicates. Marriage ceremony over, everyone is happy, we've almost gotten rid of the last of the stellipede corpses and the mess they left behind. It's turning into a nice amount of chem fuel for us uh, that we can use to make more mortar shells. Speaking of which, we may have been a little bit sneaky. Uh, one second, this is still dormant. Let's move down here for the moment and then slow it down a bit. You'll notice there's been a few additions to the... Uh, to the mechanoid area, it seems like someone has been really careless and left a whole bunch of high explosive shells just lying around the place. It's almost like someone spent an enormous amount of time manually loading caravans with one mortar shell, then moving that mortar shell in the alpaca after cancelling the caravan all the way down here to a specialised zone, then dropping off that mortar shell and running away again, and doing it several times over the course of about an hour. But... The end result is this entire area is now littered with high explosive mortar shells, which should be interesting. Each one of these mortar shells does 200 damage to a building. So it should, if they detonate, kill anything they're adjacent to, including, you know, turrets and things. Namely, we just want to hit this mortar. But of course, how do we detonate them? That is the problem. We've tried throwing grenades at them before and all sorts of things, but I've got an idea because I've been testing a lot of stuff in the background between our last attempt at uh, using alpaca bombers. And I think I found a solution. Psy powers, you know, wizards. What we're going to do is call in a flash storm right about there. Oh, run. Oh, yeah, we should we should really get out of here. It seems we've uh, we may have awoken them a little bit. Oh, oh, yep, and there comes the drop pods. Everyone run back inside, back inside, back inside. Whoa, you missed. That's good. That's good. That's it. Are people around the corner. <laughs> All right, everyone back to work. Perfect. Now you'll notice that there is fires going on in here. That is good because fires spread and fires will slowly burn down the mortar shells. The reason the mortar shells and the grenades wouldn't explode last time is if you bring them, if you bring a weapon or bring a mortar shell or something that can explode down below 20% of its hit points, there is a chance for it to detonate every hit after that. The problem was if you throw a grenade at a, say, a, a mine, it will do 20 points of damage each hit. Which means if it already has 20 points of damage and you hit it with a grenade, it simply vaporizes it. But if we can set them on fire, they will slowly burn down, meaning there's really, really good odds they should explode. Now, I have set up some safe zones. Actually, I might want to make sure... Where is it? If we check the zones here, here is... Colonist zone? Yeah, colonist zone... Hmm. Yeah, I think... Actually, wait, no. Let's maybe trim these back just a little bit more, just in case. <laughs> I don't trust them to not come down here and get sniped. Yeah, there we go. Now let's see how these mortar shells come along, shall we? Ah, I just realized, yeah, we're about to use a six anima grass. And the tree's probably going to burn down. You know what? We can grow another one. It's fine. And, oh yes, that's on fire. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, that one's on fire also. Oh, this plan... It's coming together lovely. Ah, well, there goes a couple of turrets. Oh, they didn't like that, did they? That's probably going to stir them up to attack. Oh, oh, oopsie. You, you, that, no, that's what you get for leaving mortars just lying around the place. You people are crazy. Leaving mortars around like that, someone's bound to get hurt. All right, they're heading over to this area. Let's bring all our animals back inside. I think we've stirred up a bit of a hornet's nest. And they're probably going to murder all our animals if they get a chance. And... Why is there someone injured over here? Oh, that's from the, the bugs. Okay, I think we'll get everyone into this zone over here and get ready for a bit of a fight against some very, very angry mechanoids. Oh no, would you look at that? Another mortar shell has caught on fire. You know what, I'd like to see in slow motion how well these explode, but we are... Oh! What the... Oh, you... M oh, God damn it! <laughs> yes, I know there's a mod, don't block doorways. But that is so frustrating. Just because someone decided to shear an alpaca in the middle of a doorway. You only shear an alpaca once every 10 cycles, which means that just the odds of that happening are just so frustratingly annoying. Tasha, I'm gonna need you to run. I'm gonna need you to run right now. Um, crud. Yeah. Tasha, you can go over there. If Tasha runs back in there, there's a chance she won't die. Oh, I really wanted to see where that mortar shell exploding was. What happened when that mortar shell exploded? Yep, it'll take too long. We gotta make sure Tasha stays alive. Tasha, run! Run! Good. Okay, will the rest of them go into the kill box? Yes, 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 they will. Uh, perfect, we will uh, wind up Worf. 
How have you not equipped those yet? Go equip some EMP grenades, you muppet. Yeah, I think the rest will come back now, will they? Okay, Tasha, you're safe. Go hide in the back there. Perfect. We'll get Wharf over here. We'll EMP any of these suckers coming out of there. You know what? We'll maybe pull that back just a teach. Right about there is good. All right, let's get this party started, shall we? And Kira, you've got some nice abilities you can use. How about we, uh, yeah, blinding pulse and vertigo. I've tried berserk before in testing, but it only lasts a really small amount of time. Anyway. The vertigo one is really handy for when they hit in between EMP grenades, and I need a little bit more time to kill everyone. It's sort of like an extra level of stun we can apply to them. That worked out beautifully. Now you, oh, you I don't like. You know what, Kira, you've got that, uh, where is it? Yes, Berserk Pulse. We can do this through a wall, I think. Yep, there we go. Now they've gone Berserk. Which means... Okay, it's sent it all wonky. Tell me it's turned around now. <laughs> okay, that Scyther just ran over and slapped it going, what do you think you're doing? Eh. Alright, despite the fact that there was a fair few centipedes in there, this line-out did quite well. I, I like that I did a bunch of testing in a, a previous video on just weapons, and heavy SMGs are just a very cost-efficient way, even for low-quality shooters, to do a lot of damage to centipedes. And all of that testing is paying off, because normally I'd have, you know, assault rifles or whatever equipped, but no. Heavy SMGs, close-range killbox, you can definitely slaughter a decent amount of centipedes. First up, though, hull urgently, I think, is a good idea on that one. Uh, we're going to have to clean up this... Oh... Seriously, there's still one left. Where did you come from? Actually, let's see what kind of mess we've got down here to deal with. Oh yes, that centipede probably came from this, and the fires are still spreading quite nicely. We've also got a psychic drone high male. Uh, we did just get a wedding, so that should hopefully help out. We'll just finish off this last centipede and get on with our day. Oh, and Tasha, you're, uh, I think you're free to go back to work. You know what, we'll, we'll bring you over here, and then we'll... What I like to do is, after a big fight, I bring everyone close to the dining area so that they... Uh, they eat their meal in a nice room before they go to sleep. Things black back at the mechanoid base are looking pretty scorchio. A whole bunch of turrets got destroyed by the mortar shells we left behind, though this mortar is still online. Though if that detonates, it will definitely be knocked. As you can see, it lost 200 points from every mortar hit, so that will definitely blast it. Unfortunately, we did nothing to the mech assembler, but yeah, we can go out there tomorrow morning and take care of that thing. We've, they've got two turrets left there and a few left at the back, but all we really need to do is take out that and those Hmm, yeah, I'll probably have to take him out anyway, though they're not really that big big of a danger at that distance away from our base. Uh, come on, let's see this, uh, let's see this sucker pop. And there we go. I'm gonna call it. Alpaca bombers are the business. They just totally help me taking care of these things. It's a bit of, it's a lot of micromanagement, and it'll definitely be patched out at some point. But it's a lot of fun to just lay a bunch of explosives all around the mechanoids, and the mechanoids are like, yeah, yeah, go for it, no worries, no worries, and then just set fire to the whole place and watch them pop. Hey, right, Garrick, did you get... How badly were you injured? Wow, Garrick was our only injury from that entire engagement. Never mind, Garrick is fully healed. It was only a minor burn. Wow. I was going to go down and take out those turrets, but... Damn, that's a big fire. That fire just has not gone out. Look at the huge blaze. Normally, rain starts. The, the storyteller kicks in rain to stop the whole map from burning down, but it seems at this point, they don't care. Uh, everyone's a feeling a little bit under the weather because there's an enormously high psychic... Minus 54. Ah, psychically hypersensitive. I need to get my hands on some tinfoil hats. It's a pity you can't actually build tinfoil hats. Yeah, stock up on beer, smoko, uh, pretty much everything you can get your ha hands on. Yeah, that that's not good. Hopefully no one has anything too dangerous of a break, but we may have to do a few arrests here. You know what? This is not the worst thing. The fire is spread all the way down here and lit the high explosive shell we stuck on top of this one. Oh, there goes two more turrets, making our lives just a little bit simpler. This place looks like it's been devastated, though. Everything's been burnt out. I think we'll go in here and take out those turrets. Oh, we really need... Yep, this will be two minutes. We'll just grab Kira and Cisco here as a strike squad and remove a lot of them. This smoke pop... Mm, hopscotch? I don't know if this is actually an improvement on the game. Mechanites have been assembled and will defend their... That's really bad timing. Really, really, really bad timing. Uh, we will give you... Oh, no, we're too far away for Berserk. You know what? Let's just run. <laughs> I am not facing a centipede out in the open, especially when armed with one of those weapons. Just leg it back up here, use the smoke cloud for defense, hopefully no one gets a bead on you. Oh, I think it's noticed us. Oh god. 
Ow. Ow. How did Vertigo Pulse not work? Is that thing immune to Vertigo Pulse? Because if it is, that's bad. Fira, how you doing? How are we fighting this thing out in the open? Vertigo Pulse should have absolutely decimated it. Uh, you know what? Let's hit it with something else then. How about Blinding Pulse? That might be an idea. Though I don't think Kira is doing too good at the moment. What the hell? Does that thing have no... Does this, none of these have any effect on it? Alright, from what I can see, none of these things have an effect on it. Which, if I had known, I probably would not be facing this thing in open combat. I would have lowered it into the kill box. Okay, let's uh, maybe send everyone back to work. Kira, how you doing? Ow. Yep, maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you back to bed. I wish someone could carry you. Right, everyone else, return to work. That was a complete mistake. Turns out, Blinding Pulse doesn't seem to work on centipedes? I had no idea, or I don't know what was going on right there. Cisco and Deanna are on their way back down here again, but we've got an infestation up here, which is great. Well, that'll provide us with some more uh, insect jelly. But we'll deal with that in a minute. I've set up some, I've called our animals home, I've uh, set up some nice safe zones, and I'm just going to get rid of this because I don't want any more centipedes spoiling our fun. All right, we are finally dealt, done with that mechs, the mech. Mechanoid out hive, uh, everyone should have the plus four for defeated a mech. Yep, perfect. And now let's get everyone set up in here. I think we'll do a little kill box along here. Granite wall, yeah, some grenades. We'll just toss them out there and we'll murder ourselves a bunch of bugs. We've got a nice little setup going on. Let's open the doors and start taking care of some bugs. Uh, who's going to open the door? Wesley, where are you? Well, here comes the bugs. Hopefully it'll aggro the ones up there as well. But they don't seem to care yet. You can hold your fire for a bit, no point. Uh, accidentally killing off a bunch of bug meat we could probably use later. The A bunch of the bugs ended up over here, some of them ended up in some other places, it's all sort of random. I think they're all heading back home now. Uh, there is an interesting quest that came up. Unstoppable Beasts. Uh, 67 manhunting tortoises will show up and we've got some goodwill with the Empire and a Psychic Harmonizer, so... Yeah, I suppose? View Acolyte? No, doesn't matter, you know what, we will accept that. All of that goodwill all it costs us is 67 man-hunting tortoises. I think we can be fine with that. Oh, and that reminds me, I still have to go mine out that uh, lump of compacted machinery. The tortoises have showed up, but I was kind of hoping they'd attack the bugs. It turns out the bugs and the tortoises have an alliance. That's... Unfortunate? I, I didn't know the tortoises were like that. Okay, you know what? Let's uh, get some distance on them and riddle them full of bullets would be my preferred method of dealing with these. Uh, get rid of any of the short-range weaponry... Everyone else, this is going to be an awful lot of shooting training. Actually, let's see how badly injured everyone was. I sort of want to get everyone out of bed if I can. Just on the grounds that this is going to be an awful lot of shooting training. These uh, tortoises take a long time to go down, so everyone's going to gain a level today. All right, let's see how this goes. Now we're going to damage a bunch of our walls. It's okay, just as so long as we kill all of these unstoppable monsters. Wow, okay, that was yeah, a lot of shooting. I'm pretty sure if we select anyone here at all, they're all going to have uh, gained the maximum amount of shooting skill for the day. Nope, oh, yeah, learning maxed out. How's your shooting? Nope, oh, maxed out. Picard, how's your shooting? Nope, oh, maxed out. One of the joys of turtles. Plus, they can't even catch you. You just like, take a step back and keep shooting them in the face. Uh, our animals are going to be starving right now because I've had them trapped them inside for a while, but I just haven't had a chance to finish off the bugs. We'll finish off the bugs tomorrow, and then we'll... Uh, yeah, then we can let the animals out. So, turtles, all dead. Well, actually, there's one left alive, so we'll get that quest completed in a minute. Uh, this is... I'm hollowing this out. I want the bugs to spawn all in here instead of spawning over here as well. Hopefully we can keep all the insect jelly contained in here. It just makes it easier to stop it deteriorating. Any small amount of deterioration in the insect jelly does really affect the value quite a bit. For example, some of this stuff has been uh, worn down a few points. It just makes it not as valuable, so I'd like to keep them in a nice sealed room and then slaughter them appropriately. Though right now, we're going to struggle to turn all of this into meat and then into chem fuel. It just, it's, it takes a while and we need to get working on that immediately. Ooh, research wise, we've got all of these ready. Let's go straight for the Starship reactor. That's the first thing we're going to have to fire up. And if we're going to do this right, we want to make sure that that is ready the moment we hire our last few pawns. Hmm, so where are we going to build a ship? You know what, we need more walls. We need to finish this off and there's just so much prep work to do in so little time. With the completion of that quest, we gained a whole bunch of relations with the Empire. 
We're now up to minus 22. Well, if you can call that up. However, I've loaded this up with some insect jelly, and we are going to launch that into the Empire so they will stop sending those really, really nasty raids at us. That should hopefully put us at peace with them. For now. For now. Uh, in fact, I don't know if I want to be facing them in the final... Like, when we turn on the ship engine. That could be devastating. Though, it would be nice to get some more cataphract armor. Nope. I'll worry about it another day. Ooh. Quest available Royal Ascent. Hmm. Yeah, we don't like them that much. Uh, oh, what's this? Danger pods. Ah, yeah. We're, we don't want this one. Three centipedes, one lancer, nine pikemen, six scythers, and then three mech drop pods. Y no, no. All for what? This? None of this seems worthwhile. We'll, we'll forget all of that. Now it's time to put together a caravan and dump a bunch of our wealth. If we're looking at this graph here... Yeah, the last 30 days, or is it last 100 days or so, our wealth has gone up quite a bit. I think it's time to get rid of all this insect jelly and a bunch of the junk we have lying around. Also, due to all of the bugs, we've ended up with way too much chem fuel. Some of that has got to go. We can't leave that lying around. Plus, we've got to start processing all these new potatoes. That's going to be a lot of meals. Our trade caravan has arrived at Rutan. We are going to get rid of all this insect jelly. Well, sell it off for an enormous profit. Get rid of a bunch of clothing as well. That's rather heavy. And we're going to pick ourselves up that bionic eye we saw last time we were by. And we'll take the rest of the money. We'll keep the flake we've currently got on us. We can sell that somewhere else. That was not the best trade, but there's not really much else there. We sort of cleaned the place out last time. Oh, we got a telescope. We'll go back to Defiant. We'll load up, and then we'll go down here. We can trade with uh, Intimacy and... What the hell? Intimacy City? Okay, and we can also uh, trade with Shark's Bramble. It's time to get rid of all of this junk that's lying around and turn it into as much valuable stuff that it can prove, improve our chances of survival as possible. Who's getting an infection? Oh yeah, we had a quick prison break. We sent in the animals. Uh, the alpaca police took care of the problem. I'm finding that when you send in animals to knock people down, it's far less likely that you kill your prisoners. Normally when I send in my people, they end up clubbing them to death or, you know, shattering their skulls or something or knocking a limb off them. You send in some animals, they get nibbled unconscious. Our caravan got ambushed by a pirate? What? Who? What? Yeah, this is not going to go well for said pirate. Let's see if they're worth capturing. This is quite possibly the best worst pawn I've ever seen. The volatile means their mental break, thresh the mental break threshold is way lower than it should be, meaning they'll break at what? Uh, if they go below 50% mood, they have a chance to break. At the same time, they're a pessimist, which means they get a minus 6 to their mood automatically, and they're an undergrounder. So if they're outdoors, they automatically get a mood penalty. They also have asthma and a painful scab scar, so they're already sick and they're suffering from minor pain. Yeah, keeping them happy would require you to just pump them full of drugs. We're going to get our people, we are going to hide behind some rocks, and then we're going to shoot them in the face. Yeah, that seems like a good plan. Yeah, oh, they're going to be even more unhappy now. Ooh, I think we should move back just a little bit and get to some better cover. Uh, actually, you can go to here, and you can go to there. Uh, just, it gives us better cover at these angles. And our people are pretty good shots, but then again, so are theirs. Ooh. Oh, come on. You have the option to capture this pawn? No, we never. Nope, nope. I'm leaving them behind. They could, they can just die. We, we don't want them. They can go. They're just not worth the effort. Wow, their clothes are all awful and their bi poor bio-coated rifle is... Your revolver is just worthless. Everything they had was poor or awful quality. Ugh, what a sucky day to be them. Anyway, let's return home. After bribing these cred down here with a little bit of drugs, they've let us uh, trade with them. Which is nice. Ooh, they've got chickens. That would have been great ages ago. We might just take those anyway. Let's see what they've got on sale. After selling a bunch of our junk, we get one Eltec staff. That's going to look great on Kira. Uh, and a marine helmet, because you can never have enough helmets. We also bought a little bit of cloth, because I really burnt all of that in uh, making poker tickables, and we need to make some more flak vests. Oh, and I picked up the two chickens, because you know what? Why not? We might as well have a little bit of fun with that, uh, that aspect of the game. Now let's return home and get our base cleaned up. I've unfortunately been letting the, the cleanliness, cleanliness go by the wayside, but we've got most of our mining done, or our uh, bricks mined out. I've started finishing off the walling. We're going to wall ourselves in the whole way around. This could take a little bit of time and a lot of granite, but once we're done, we should hopefully be an awful lot safer, and our animals should be a lot safer in here. The only thing that'll be able to get them conveniently will be drops, and of course mechanoids just appearing in the middle of nowhere. But there's something nice to be said about having the whole area around you walled in. We have finally managed to get Worf their bionic arm installed. I keep forgetting to do it, but now they've finally got it in, so they'll actually be decent. I'm also going to install uh, 
a circadian assistant in Sulu. This should allow them to stay up longer and they won't require them to have as much rest. I was going to put it into Neelix. Um, th there's reasons why I'm doing this, but I was going to put it into Neelix because they could stay up longer and do more cooking. They're a very valuable cook, but Sulu is, well, they're one of our more valuable cooks as well. And they also have the gourmand trait, which is a bit of a negative, and this should help counteract that. Now, once those two are better, we still have a few bionic parts knocking around the place that I need to install, but I've been getting very lazy about doing such things. Uh, the next one up was, we've got a bionic eye floating around, and we've also got a love enhancer. So the love enhancer will either have to go into Neelix or Kira, because the two of them, well, they're the only other couple we've got, and I think Guinan already has one, so that leaves those two to get that one to help boost their mood. But I think we're going to cut it out here today. We cut an awful lot done, though there was not as much... I did not feel like we got hit as hard as I was expecting. Currently we have this quest that's been sent to us, but I don't think it's worth the effort. It's an enormous construction project, and none of this really appeals to me. We don't really have time to be getting into pr the production of bionic parts. Uh, a good charge rifle would be nice, but for the amount of effort put into get it and the rest of it's not very weak, uh, I wouldn't call this good. But on the construction side, we've got this room all finished up. We can start uh, moving people in there. We can start stripping this out and turning that into a much larger kitchen so we can... Well, start storing the enormous amount of potatoes we've got. <laughs> all we have to do now is hunt fast enough to get enough animals that we can cook all of those up. We've finally started stockpiling meals. It's always nice to have a nice uh, stockpile of survival meals for when you go into the very late game. And we've also got a bunch of herbal medicine. So I think next up is going to be expanding the fridge, moving all of those people out of there and just turning that into one big fridge. We'll probably strip out some of these areas as well and turn it into more uh, sleeping spots. As well as that, we've been uh, installing a bunch of moisture pumps over here to make sure that this whole area gets, uh, we can wall that in and make even more areas. This place over here has been configured so that even if we do get a toxic fog, which we haven't got one yet, we can stick uh, lamps in here. There's the, you can't really see it, but there's the outlines of where the lamp should go and the walls have been put in the right positions. So even if we do get a toxic fog, we'll still be able to grow some potatoes. But all in all, this has went quite well. Once we finish our wall-ins and a few other things, we should be ready to take on the, the end game engine startup pretty handily. The only downside is, this entire episode, I don't think we got attacked by anything we could recruit. It's all been either bugs or mechanoids. Oh well. Let, let, let's hope uh, Cassandra decides to send us more joy in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck. Mm -hmm.